Hi guys, Dr. Jordan here, and really excited about this video. We're gonna talk about how to reach 100% health. You know, a lot of you out there are sick and suffering. You just wanna become healthier, and you're, you're, you're dieting, you're exercising, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're starting to make the right moves, but, you're, but there's so many people that are still sick and suffering, and that's because, A, you might not have the correct definition of health, and there's a few simple steps that you've overlooked and that's why you can't reach 100% health. And we're gonna go over in this short video exactly how to do that. Um, but before we start, I wanna kinda of give you guys a little bit of background here about the healthcare system so you understand why you're struggling. So is health going up or down in America? Most people would agree that things are getting worse. People get sicker and sicker every year. Look at heart disease, cancer, autism. All these conditions are getting worse. So all of us would basically agree we know things are not getting better, they're getting worse. Next question, how many people over the age of 60 are perfectly healthy? That's no medications, no symptoms, no disease, perfectly healthy at the age of 60. You know, I thought maybe one in 50, maybe one in 100. Um, it, it was shocking, it's actually one in 1,000. That's how bad things have gotten in America when it comes to your health. So really, you know, insanity, the definition is doing the same thing and expecting different results. We keep doing the same things with our health. We are going to continue to get sicker and get the same result, get the same results. So it's time we really start to shift our focus so we can get you guys 100% healthy. The next point here, you guys are probably wondering why the heck do you have an iPhone up there? You know, I kind of want to talk about Steve Jobs for a minute because I just want to talk about how important your health is. You know, if you lose your health, like Steve Jobs did, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in, what kind of iPhone you have. If you lose your health, nothing can bring that back, no amount of time or money. Again, Steve Jobs had all these things and he could not get his health back and he died, he died way earlier than he should have. What a waste of talent. You know, I don't want that, you know, I really don't want that for anyone else. And you know, when you lose your health, who does it affect? It affects everyone, right? And I remember, you know, my grandma's been sick lately and uh, she's very bullheaded, so she doesn't, it's hard to get her to listen and um, keeps doing the same things, getting sicker and sicker. And that's stressful for the family. We have to fly there. My mom, you know, always answering the phone, trying to deal with that. My uncle having to bring her to the hospital constantly. So really, not only does it affect everybody around you and a huge burden, it's, you know, it, it's really a selfish thing to do. You know, I, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, I'm going to eat what I want, do what I want. It's my life. I'll die early. And that's okay, but you just got to realize, don't be a burden to other people. We, I want you to live 100%. I want you to live abundant. I want you to have joy. I want you to bring joy to others. And really, that, that, that's, you know, that, that's the important part um, when it comes to looking at your health. So the next thing I want to talk about, because when you're spending money on your health, you want, to, you want the biggest bang for your buck, right? You want to get the, spend the least amount to get the best results. So before you make any healthcare decision, I want you guys to know your numbers so you can make the right choice. So, so just some average healthcare costs. Braces on average cost, cost five to $7,000. That's just so your teeth are straight, right? Um, back surgery, out of pocket expense is 6,000. Normally, it's a couple hundred thousand. Um, heart bypass, 7,300. Again, that's out of pocket, and that's 150 a month on top of that for the medications after you have the surgery. That is a lot of money each year. I mean, cancer costs like $300,000. It can cost up to $10,000 a month for all the treatments and the maintenance and things like that that they put you through. Then we start to look you know, more on the preventative side, such as chiropractic, now we're only looking at anywhere from $800 to $2,800 a year. So again, if you want, you know, you want to start to look at the cost and how much benefit you're getting out of that. Um, you know, the average American spends $7,300 a year on their health. Who wishes they had an extra $7,000 a year, right? You could buy a new car every couple years. That's how much the average person out of pocket you really is starting to spend on their health care. A lot of people say, well, who? I'm not paying for that, my insurance is. No, that's how much 
you're paying. You always ask people, if there was a magic pill out there, say it costs $10,000, which is a lot of money, but it would reverse, you know, say you're having a heart attack, it would stop the heart attack or cancer, whatever it is, completely rid of all disease for the rest of your life, $10,000, would you take that pill? Absolutely. Heck, I would probably take an extra one just in case the second one didn't work. I'd probably sell my house, get a smaller house, I'd probably sell my car just to get one for the entire family. I don't care what it takes. I don't want anyone to get disease, again, because of the time and the money that it costs in the future. That's how important your health is. So again, when you're looking at your health, you want to put you know, your money where you're going to get the best results. And that's why we're talking about prevention today and reaching 100% health. Because again, it's way cheaper to prevent a disease than, than to wait when you get it. And again, that's why chiropractic and, and preventive medicines and things like that is always your best route. Again, just don't take it from me. Make sure you look at, look at your numbers. So the next thing that I really want to start to move into is how do you know if you're healthy in the first place? So how do you know if you're healthy or not? Most people will say, well, it's how I feel, right? Most of it, you know, it's just common, you know, human nature to base your health on how you feel. But have you ever known of that person that was perfectly healthy and all of a sudden they were crazy sick or just died? You know, a good example is um, my, my, my dad's skiing partner, Roger, you know, skied all the time, worked out, great health, boom, just dropped out of a heart attack one day. And I thought that was crazy because, you know, he based his health on how he felt. And I started to do some research, and actually the very first 50% of the time, the first sign that you have heart disease or a disease is by actually having, um, or having heart disease is actually by having a heart attack. And 50% of heart attacks are fatal. So a majority of the time, the first sign that you have a problem is you dropping dead. Is that a good way to find out that you're not healthy? Right? No, it's not a good way. You know, another great example is my mom, perfectly healthy, gym teacher, felt great, went in for a routine checkup, diagnosed with breast cancer. And again, she felt fine. Now, is it possible to have heart disease or cancer developing in your body and you not feel it. Yeah, absolutely. They say on average cancer develops for 10, 15, 20 years before you actually have a full-size tumor and it's diagnosed. So these things have been going on forever in the body. You know, you just haven't felt it. So, so what's some other ways you know if you're healthy or not? You know, you know diet, obviously, that's, that's very important. Um, Exercise, a lot of people, ba you know, exercising, you know, get, don't get me wrong, these are great things, but I remember Jim Fix, he invented jogging and the guy died of a heart attack. So again, those things are important and they're what we teach in our offices, but they're not everything. We're missing one thing and I call it the Uncle Rudy syndrome. You, ever, you have that uncle in the back of the wedding or family functions, he's smoking, drinking, doing all the wrong things, yet the guy's never been sick a day in his life. You're like, this, this is unfair, it doesn't make sense. You know, I think about myself, chronically sick as a kid, exercised, ate well, and just always sick. And I knew there had to be, there had to be something more than diet and exercise and how I felt, you know, as far as my health went. So, we need to figure out what the heck being healthy even means. And um, so actually the true definition, I'm going to show you guys this find my note cards here. The true definition of health is actually right in the word. So if I just blocked healthy here, block this out, what does that give you? Heal. Health is actually your, your body's ability to function and heal at 100%, not just the mere absence of symptoms. So it's actually how your body's working, not how you, not how you feel. And um, so again, if I want to keep you perfectly healthy, I need to get your body healing at 100%. That's how we achieve 100% health. And Harvard actually did a study, and they were trying to figure out on a scale from zero to 100% health, where do you first have a symptom, and when do you first have a disease? 
Where do you think, I'm going to let you guys think about this, where do you think 0 to 100, what percent, you know, 80 percent, 70, 60, 50, would you have a symptom? You don't have a symptom until you're at 60 percent function. That means your body has decreased function by 40 percent. And disease, right here, at 40 percent so a good example um, but you know does anyone ever go from 100 percent to zero overnight you know 100 percent healthy to dead it looks that way Roger perfectly healthy dropped dead of a heart attack one day but again no these things take decades to happen you just don't feel it you know a, you know, a really good example this is my own personal story is very sick as it you know I got very sick as a kid and I remember going to the doctor and um, you know, they gave me a medication. I took the medication. I started to feel better. Um, and then I remember they said it stopped working. So a lot of you guys can relate to this story. So I go back and they want to give me more medication because that one stopped working. And then it came back again and I started to have other issues because of the medication. Then guess, guess who they want to send me to? And yeah, they would send me to a specialist. And then the specialist wants to do special tests and give me special medication. And at this point, I had an autoimmune disease from all the, I think, partially from the medications and everything I was going through. And I had Hashimoto's thyroiditis, an autoimmune condition. And basically what they said was, you know, the specialist said, after so long, eventually we're going to have to do surgery and remove your thyroid because of all the damage. Not a very good outcome. So it was doctor, medication, more medication, special doctor, special medication, and then surgery. That is literally our entire healthcare system. That is the model. So if you are in it and you want to become 100% healthy, it's physically impossible because that is the system that you're in, right? So I really never had a chance at getting healthy in the system. And the crazy thing is, top three killers in America, number two being heart disease, number three being cancer. Guess what the number one cause of death in America is? You guessed it, the actual healthcare system. And this isn't just from people overdosing on medications or whatnot or procedures gone bad. This is from people taking their medications properly, doing what they were supposed to, error happening and people dying. The number one cause of death. You know, that's scary. That's why prevention, it really is so important. So, you know, on this scale, when is it the cheapest to work on your health. Because again, I want you guys the biggest bang for your buck. I want to get you guys to 100%. Where on here, if you put your money, is going to be the cheapest to get your health back? Yeah, when you're over here, right? It's always cheaper to change your oil than wait and let it go, and then you have to replace your entire engine. Where are we treating disease in America right now? After you have disease, right? Right in this area, when you're close to death, you're in the 20, 30, 40% range which is the most expensive time to treat disease. Guess what? We have the most, the <laughs> most expensive healthcare system on the planet because this is where we're treating disease instead of here. This is where we uh, treat disease. This is where the medical model treats disease. We spend 12.5% of our income on healthcare costs. That's crazy. They said when we hit 17%, it's economic collapse because we're spending so much money just on health. You know, one of the last things I want to talk about before we wrap this up is, you know, what are some of these symptoms? Most people don't realize that they're having them, but it can be anything from neck pain to back pain to headaches, menstrual issues, high blood pressure, uh, depression, anxiety, insomnia, fatigue, acid reflux, any of these I could go on and on. These are the symptoms. This is the, the check engine light. You know, I heard a funny story about this. This guy just dropped out of, of a heart attack one day. You know, he gets to heaven. And he's like, what the heck, God? Why didn't you give me a heads up? Let me know that this was coming so I could have prepared or done something about it. And, he's, and then the guy just starts chuckling. He's like, dude, he's like, what are you talking about? You know, I give you splitting headaches every week, numbness down your arm, acid reflex. He's like, I gave you all these, all these signs and you just ignored it. And, you know, I think it's funny because, you know, that's really exactly what's, what's happening. We're ignoring these things. Symptoms are a good thing. They're the check engine light 
that's telling you, hey buddy, let's do something about this. Let's, sit, let's, let's fix the problem to get you 100% healthy. Um, so again, with achieving 100% health, if I want to keep you and your family 100% healthy, I just need to figure out what controls all function in healing in the body. What's, what, what part of your body does that? Your brain, it controls everything. It's how your heart's beating, you're digesting food, uh, your lungs are working, your brain is controlling all that. It sends information down your spinal cord, out the nerves to each organ, okay? Um, it's the same reason I remember uh, my sister had a baby, they were trying to figure out, or I asked them, you know, what's the very first thing to develop? And they said, actually, the, the spine and the nervous system, and uh, after that, the organs like little fruit on a tree. I said, you know, why is that? He said, because this side of the spine controls the organ side. So that's why you have to look there first. Another um, cool example is watching 60 Minutes, and uh, they actually found out they're actually using the polio vaccine, injecting into cancer tumors, and getting good results from it. The reason being, it's bringing attention to the immune system and the nervous system to attack that area. So again, you have to ask yourself, if a cut can heal in your hand, why can't you, your heart heal itself? Why can't your digestive issues heal themselves or whatever you're experiencing? It's physically being blocked. The brain can heal all things. You just need to give the body what it needs and remove the interference so the brain through the spinal cord can control all, all those functions. So, you know, I always have a person that says, you know, well, I don't know if I believe in chiropractic or believe in that. And um, you don't have to believe in it. You know, I think, I think about Christopher Reeves, uh, fell off a horse, fractured the top bone in his neck, again, moved one centimeter, uh, shut down all function in his body. And, um, you know, he didn't die because he couldn't move his arms or his legs. He died from an infection because his immune system was so weak. And why was his immune system weak? Because every, every organ in his, of his immune system is innervated, um, is controlled by the nervous system. That's how, you know, that's really how important it is. So again, so if I want to know if you're sick or healthy, where would I have to look? I'd have to look at the spine, right? And what, because that's where the, um, the nervous system is housed. So what is the best test, if I do one test, to look at how that system of the body is working? An x-ray, right? You can literally see everything that's going on. You can see the structure. You can see the, you can see the function. So in one of our other videos, we're going to go over exactly how you can read your own x-rays. And um, so you can find out, in fact, is that where it's coming from or is it coming from somewhere else? Um, so, so thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.